WWE Hall of Famer, the Think, Howard Finkel. And you're watching Florida Championship Wrestling. And let me tell you, it doesn't get any better than this. Alongside Wade Barrett and Wade, what a night it is going to be. I bet, Saxon, and let me tell you, it is an absolute pleasure to be back here in the FCW commentary booth. And let me say it's an absolute pleasure to have you back. Let's yes. go. The following contest is a tag team match kind of for one fall. Introducing first the team of Johnny Prime and Leroy Morgan. Young and Hungry, a great way to describe this tag team combination of Leroy Morgan and Johnny Prime. First time these two have actually teamed together. Well, it's going to be very interesting to see how well they can gel, Saxton. They don't know each other too well, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. What on earth is happening on my screen, Saxton? It's a party time. I, love, I know about these guys. These are South Beach boys. Wow, it's all gone sparkly. <laughs> these guys are awesome. I mean, they know how to get down. They know how to get time. And they got great fashion sense. Well, it's all very exciting, Saxton, but I've come here to see some action. I've come here to see some fights. Let's oh, hope oh. they can fight as well as they can dance. Eh? I feel funny. Darren Young and Percy Watson making their FCW TV debut. It's a great way to start things off. You, you know, it's like we've jumped into a time machine and been transported back to the 70s in Harlem, across 112th Street. It's like a roller coaster I rode when I was 10. Well, these South Beach boys preparing to engage in FCW action. Look at those tights. Darren Young to start things off with Johnny Prime. Of course, Johnny Prime, no stranger to fans here in FCW. We know his story. Took some time off to kind of do some soul searching. We're right back in action, trying to make his way up the ladder. Nice final scary takedown. But you always have that unknown factor when you're taking on a brand new team like the South Beach boys. That's absolutely correct, Saxon. And the thing about a new tag team, they want to make sure they get their first match and they want to make sure it's a win. Leroy Morgan in there now. Third generation superstar in his own right. Uh-oh. Nice strength by Darren Young goes for the cover. Did you get a chance to talk to these guys at all? No, I avoid them like the plague, Saxton. Look at the state on them. They actually told me, hey, after tonight, if you want to go out and party, you're welcome to. So they, they invited me out to party. I'm not going anywhere, these two clowns. You wouldn't? 1-800-GET-DOWN, that's a number. Well, I'm not going to be calling it. No. In there now is a Percy Watson, who, uh, well, looks like Leroy Morgan got the better end of that shoulder tackle. Nice agility, wow. Really touching the roof of the FCW arena. Whoa, what is that? What do you call that? It's a two-step. The funky shuffle. Saxon, I don't dance. I don't know these moves. You Stop asking these stupid questions and focus on the match. Who doesn't dance? Real men don't. I like to dance. These guys are all about the party. Derek Young off the top rope. Nice hair, too. Oh, wow. That would be uh, in your face. Let me tell you something, Saxton. This Darren Young, he reminds me of a young Byron Saxton. Uh, yeah, what? Look at the hair on his head. If you could only grow a full barn like that. What do you mean if I could only? I could grow as much hair as I want. Darren Young, look at this. It's like a dance party inside the FCW arena. I Everybody's can't say I approve of this, Saxton. <laughs> Whoa. Well, neither did Leroy Morgan. Swiftly tried to take the head off of Darren Young. 
Yeah, welcome to FCW. And look at Johnny Prime got a town now. I've never seen this side of Johnny Prime before. That's aggression. That aggression means Johnny Prime realizes that he doesn't want to play victim. Oh, man. Hangman on the bottom rope over the cover. Johnny Prime realizing he doesn't want to be victim to two new superstars here in FCW. Making their debut, no less. Nice double team maneuver here by Prime and Morgan. Morgan with the cover, but not enough for Darren Young. Well, we've just witnessed the problem with theatrics, Saxton. This Darren Young, he wants to come out here and dance around and party, and that's fine. But he made a real pig's ear of it, and that's when Johnny Prime and Leroy Morgan have capitalized. He made a what? A pig's ear of it. A dog's dinner of it. A real mess. Are you making this stuff up as you go? Of course I'm not making it up, Saxon. This is the Queen's English. Maybe you should learn it sometime. Okay, calm down. Easy. Relax. What's out here having fun? Darren Young tagging in. Percy. Oh, mercy. Percy chopping the leg on Leroy Morgan. Great shape. Both these individuals. Morgan tried to stop him. The momentum of hitting that rope caught himself. He might have hurt himself on the rope then, Saxton. But Percy, oh, how high? How high can you go? I think Morgan's out on his feet. Two drop kicks. Morgan, yeah, he, he looks like he's trying to figure out where he is. And Darren Young and Percy Watson clearly, perhaps with a power advantage in this match, Percy having his way with Leroy Morgan at the moment. Morgan trying to reverse and face first. Big D. I, I think Morgan might be knocked out. Out oh. cold. Big win for the South Beach Boys. Here are your winners. Darren Young and Percy Watson. Wow, well, impressive debut for Darren Young and Percy Watson, the South Beach Boys. It makes me want to get down, huh? No, absolutely not, Saxton. But what a main event we have on tonight. We got a huge six-man tag, Saxton. Let's hear about it. Yeah, Kayla Croft, Trent Beretta, and Kurt Hawkins team up to take on the Florida Tag Team Champions, Bola Duke Rotundo and Brett DiBiase. That's big, real big. Combustible elements still to come tonight. Entertainment. The following contest is a Divas match scheduled for one fall. Introducing first, from Staten Island, New York, she is the queen of FCW, Mia Mangini. Well, I'm sure those words out of the mouth of Savannah are reluctant, knowing that that is the diva that defeated her for the queen of FCW title, and the diva that has taken FCW by storm, Mia Mancini. Well, she's smoking hot, Saxton, but she is sending shivers down my spine right now. She's the ice queen of FCW. Saxton, and it just goes to show you never can be too sure which Raw superstar is going to turn up next here at FCW. Kale Kim taking on Mia Mancini. To my understanding, this is not for the crown, but nonetheless should be an exceptional matchup. Mancini in there with Gail Kim, perhaps with the slight strength advantage. Gail Kim certainly would have the edge and experience. Now Mancini, she has been so dominant so far in her career here in FCW, but this is a step up. You have to say this is her biggest test yet. She's facing Gail Kim. Gail Kim is a veteran in that ring. Oh, oh, Gail Kim knows what it is to be a champion. She's the former women's champion in her own right. But uh, hey, maybe it's a tribute. Maybe it's a tribute to the competition <laughs> in the Divas Division here in FCW. Nice roll up by Gail Kim. 
A Raw superstar still wanting to come to FCW and take on the best, and right now the best is Mia Mancini. You know, I've got to be honest with you, Saxon. I'm not sure there's a diva on the planet who is tougher than Mia Mancini, but we're going to find out tonight just how good she is against Gail Kim. Looks like uh, both ladies perhaps in a feeling out stage. Neither one was going to take an unnecessary risk, although we know Gail Kim loves to fly. Mancini trying to get that shoulder down. Possible pinfall. Says she always gets what she wants. And in that, oh, look at this. That's innovation, Saxton. That's really nice. by Kim rolls Mancini up. Mancini responds with that arm drag takedown, putting pressure on the left arm of Gail Kim. You know, this has been some real good back and forth action so far. No one's taking complete control yet. Mia Mancini operating by her own Mancini code of ethics, and uh, perhaps that's part of it. She's not made a whole lot of friends since making her debut here in FCW. She doesn't need to make many friends, Saxton. She's made the one friend she needs to make, and that's the crown of the queen of FCW. Oh, velocity is sending Gail Kim into the corner. Kim using her quickness to move out of the way. And he rolling shoulders down by Mancini. And Kim at home, flying. Springboard crossbody. Now let me ask you this, what happens what happens if Gail Kim defeats Mia Mancini here tonight? I mean, I would, I would suspect, I would suspect that she would love to have a shot at that Queen of FCW title. There isn't a diva out there that wouldn't like to wear that crown, Saxton. You know, every girl dreams of being the prom queen. Oh, man. Wow. Nice counter by Mia Mancini. May have draped that arm over the top rope. May have clipped the jaw of Gail Kim as well. You know, we've seen here in FCW that all the WWE Divas are watching here in FCW. They're watching Mia Mancini and they want Max Leg. Just look at the list, who've come, list of competitors who've come back and tried to take a shot at the crown. We've seen Tiffany back here, we've seen Rosa Mendes, and now we're seeing Gail Kim. That's how big this crown is, Saxton. They're all talking about it in the locker room at WWE. I'll never forget, I'll never forget the night that Mia Mancini won the crowd of the queen of FCW and all the divas were kind of sitting in wait, watching, and when Mia Mancini won that title, nobody was smiling, nobody was happy. It was almost, it was almost a feeling of fear that this is now the woman we've got to conquer if we want to become queen. They were scared because they knew an Watch era again. of dominance was upon us. Mancini, series of covers, can't seem to put away Gail Kim. I've got to be honest with you, Saxton. One of my favorite things about the Divas is the fact that I get to check out how hot they look. But the problem with Mia Mancini is I get fear when I look at her. I'm scared that she'll catch me looking at her. Well, thank you for your honesty, Wade. I'm just a man like you, Saxton. Well, perhaps you should talk to someone about that problem. Oh, man. Violent shoulders. And notice how Mancini just kind of grinds it in. Grinds that right shoulder into the abdomen of Gail Kim. Oh, wow. There's a response. And this could turn the tide right now, Saxton. Mancini's in a bad way. Gail Kim trying to capitalize. Still favoring that left arm. Oh. Gail Kim proving why she is a former women's champion full speed in the corner on Mia Mancini. They've had plans going up to that top rope. Mancini instead. I don't know what you call that. I'm That's sure the speed hurt. factor right there. Very fast reactions from Gail Kim. And now, very dangerous place to be, high-risk area. Very Gail precarious. Kim, top rope, Hurry, Carrano, Mancini held on. Mia <laughs> Mancini held on to that top rope. This time, Gail tries to hook her again. Mancini sat through, and she's got the rope. Here is your winner, Mia Mancini. Well, Mia Mancini, perhaps.
perhaps one of the biggest wins of her career. Not only still the queen of FCW, but defeating Raw Diva, Gail Kim. Take a look again. Gail Kim doing what brought her to the dance. High risk maneuver, but it was Mancini with the aid of the rope, holding on and capturing the win. And the streak of Mancini continues. Speaking of which, another streak, a streak of rivalry. Up next, Alex Riley goes one-on-one -on -one with Gabriel. One minute to make history. 30 seconds. He's going for it. He's going for it. Time ticking. 10 seconds remaining. Angel with the counter. We got a new champion. Amazing, Barrett. Amazing. The winner of this bout. And new Florida heavyweight champion, Justin Angel. Introducing first, from Washington, D.C., weighing 247 pounds, Alex Riley. Will this match finally settle the score between Alex Riley and Gabriel? I don't know, Saxon. This is one of the longest-running feuds in FCW history. This is a big, big match. If this ends it, I'll be very surprised. Alex Riley hidden antics and all. Still, still having problems with Gabriel. Introducing his opponent from Wokingham, England, weighing 255 pounds, Gabriel. Well, I'm sure what happened last week is fresh in the mind of Gabriel, Alex Riley, enlisting the help of Eli Cottonwood, of all people, who he used in order to get a pinfall win over Gabriel in last week's tag team match. And Gabriel immediately eyeing Alex Riley, who conveniently slides out of the ring and in no rush to take him on. Look at Gabriel, he's so big, so powerful, but he's so dainty as well. He's like a walking oxymoron. Gabriel, uh oh, wait a minute. I know that music. I love that music. It's the GN. On his aim. And look at the ladies he's got in All right, hold on, hold on. I want to be the first to say that I am so sick and tired of seeing Gabriel versus Alex Riley. Huh? Y'all feel the same way? No, 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 no. Now, that has nothing to do with you, Alex, because you are my number one draft pick, so that means I got your back. But the man, the man that's making me upset is you, Gabriel. I am so tired of you bringing your chipmunk face into my office, huh? Chipmunk Asking face. me for a title shot. You know what? I give you what I want to give you. Don't speak out of line, boy. Now, um, if you want your title shot, I'll give it to you. But there's a stipulation. You have to defeat Alex Riley this evening. Huh? Is that okay with you? If you defeat him, you'll get your title shot. But, 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 hold on, hold on. If you lose, I don't want to see your face anymore. Do you understand that? Is that fair, ladies and gentlemen? Huh? Is that fair? All right. Now that you know the rules, good. Because guess what, Gabriel? There's one more stipulation. This will no longer be a singles match. It's now a handicap match. So I told you I was fair. So if you would, ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Alex Riley's new tag team partner for the evening, Mr. Eli Cottonwood. Oh, yeah. Are you kidding me? Oh my word, Saxton. My day has just got a lot better. It's big Eli and Alex Riley to take on Gabriel. Talk about stacking the deck against Gabriel. So, so let me get this right, I mean, Abraham Washington 
has said if Gabriel wins this match, he gets his title shot, no problem. But if he loses, if he loses, he's gone. That's exactly what I heard. And look at the maniacal smile on the face of Big Eli Gotham. And oh yeah, by the way, the man straight out of the Kellogg Sanitarium is going to be Alex Riley's tag team partner, thus making this a handicap match. Oh wow, that is incredible. Let's see Gabriel try and worm his way out of this one. No chance. Uh, oh, Gabriel, I mean, we, we know he's used to being the underdog, but uh, this is... Uh, this isn't right. And immediately we see the power difference. Look at the size of Big Eli. Seven foot tall, over seven feet tall. Conductor of destruction, Eli Cottonwood. No, that's not gonna work. My gosh, what power. Huge fall to the outside there. I think Gabriel's hurt himself on that fall. Gabriel trying to whip Eli Cottonwood across the ring. To no avail, Eli Cottonwood establishing pure dominance in this match. As Alex Riley, he hasn't even taken off his jacket. I don't think he needs to bother. This is going to be one way traffic here. Gabriel fighting back in the back of his mind. He's got to know if things get rough for Eli Cottonwood, all he's got to do is tag in a fresh Alex Riley. Well, I'll hand it to Gabriel, he's a big fairy, but watch him fight. Oh, look at this. Just like last week, just like last week, Gabriel choke slammed by Cottonwood, goes for the cover. Yes. Here are your winners, Eli Cottonwood and Alex Riley. And look at Alex Riley, he didn't even break sweat in that match, Saxton. How impressive, how well conditioned is Alex Riley. So, so this is it? This is it for Gabriel? I think that is the last we're ever gonna see of Gabriel. But that's the news the world has been waiting for. He's off our screens for good. All, all Gabriel wanted was a title shot. That's all he ever wanted. And you mean to tell me now Gabriel is, is gone from FCW? Well, kiss goodbye to Gabriel. He's down, and even better, he's out. Uh, yeah, there's some things I can endorse, folks, but this... This isn't right. Oh, stop your whining, Saxton. An entertainment. Welcome back to FCW, folks. And this, apparently, will be the last image we see of Gabriel in Florida Championship Wrestling getting choke slammed by Eli Cottonwood, thanks to a stipulation by Abraham Washington. I just, I can't believe that's it. I can't believe it. It is one of the greatest days of my life. No more Gabriel, he's gone. Goodbye. The following contest is scheduled for one fall. Introducing first, from College Station, Texas, weighing 278 pounds, Skip Sheffield. Well, I'm normally happy to see Skip Sheffield, but I just, the mood doesn't feel the same. I mean, we just, we just saw a man essentially see his career come to an end. <laughs> it's nothing less than Gabriel deserves. I've hated him for a long time, and I for one am glad he's gone. But this Skip Sheffield, he might be the only person on the planet able to bring me down. The big time, big time, big time, big time says it's go time. Rumble, Bumble, Stumble, FCW. Good old Skip Sheffield is feeling pretty humble. I ain't gonna lie. And it's because each and every one of you and you and you have touched me. And I'm pretty sure I have touched each and every one of you out there too. So with that being said, week in and week out, Skip Sheffield is gonna show up here and fight, whether you like it or not. Because I am without a shadow of a doubt, the most entertaining, mind-blowing, main event caliber attraction in sports entertainment today. And FCW, if you're down skippy with that, can I get a yep, yep, yep? Yep, yep, yep! Yep, yep, yep! What it do? So says the teacher. Andrew. 
introducing his opponent. From Shreveport, Louisiana, weighing 265 pounds, Lennox McEnroe. Well, you know, Saxton, FCW could be well advised to invest in some lessons in linguistics for this skip, Sheffield. I didn't get a word of that. You didn't get, yep, yep, yep? No, I certainly did not, and I hope I never do. How about what it do? Be quiet, Saxton. Well, Let's talk about this match now. That's how Skip talks. Skip Sheffield, uh, I, I believe, I guess his record is now 1-0 here on FCW TV. And uh, we'll be looking to add to that here against Lennox McEnroe. Lennox, of course, uh, been on the shelf for quite some time with a neck injury. Returning to action here tonight. Would love to spoil the good times of Skip Sheffield. You know, we've got two very big, powerful superstars in there right now. I'm predicting this one is not going to be pretty. It's going to be a slugfest, Saxton, and that's my favorite kind of match. Well, that's that Skip Sheffield style. He's a corn-fed country boy. He's a corn-fed imbecile, if you ask me. Well, come on now. He's innocent. Did you know he's got a PhD? No, I, uh, I find that very difficult to believe. I've got to be perfectly honest with you. Yeah, pretty huge delts. <laughs> pretty, pretty huge delts. Get it? Is that some sort of joke? PH, pretty huge delts. Have you seen the guy's delts? He's built. You make me sick. Well, that's, that's what he told me. Skip Sheffield here against Lennox McEnroe. Obviously going to utilize his strength. Oh, wait a minute. And speaking of which, catching Lennox McEnroe, who's going for a cross body. McEnroe responds. That's single arm DDT. Lennox McEnroe. Pressing maneuver there, attacking that left arm. Yeah. McEnroe comes to FCW with a great deal of worldwide experience. Well, look at this, Saxton. So far, it's been no, no, no for that Skippy Sheffield. That was creative. No, no, no. Yep, yep, yep. Thank you. I'm very fast. I've got a very quick brain. You do like it, don't you? Oh, well, wow. quick cover there by Lennox. I like seeing him get beat. Would you consider it an upset? I mean, you know, granted, both guys are, you know, fairly newcomers here in, in FCW, but would it be an upset for Lennox McEnroe to get one here on Skip? Absolutely not. Skip Sheffield, he's 1-0. That doesn't mean a thing to me. He needs to get at least 10 wins under his belt before I start paying attention to him. He told me he actually celebrated that first win. He said he went out mudding and had some Mountain Dew and some Pixie Sticks. Well, that sounds like a cracking party to me, Saxton, but leave me out of it. Oh, look at the strength. That special strength, that is. He's a special person, and he's got special strength to go with it. Skip Sheffield trying to find that opening, using his strength. McEnroe turns around. How would you like to see that charge in action? Huge clothesline there. That almost separated his head from his body. Again, Skip McEnroe tries to sidestep him, but that didn't get him very far. Graduate of Texas A&M, played football. Oh, with that press, they're just pounding away. You know, I don't think this Skip Sheffield will be much cop in an intellectual debate, but he can certainly handle himself in the ring. What's he doing now? The Sheffield strut? I don't know what it was, and Lennox McEnroe has just ended up in a very precarious position. He comes at the over-the-shoulder boulder holder. And perhaps you can now call him a winner. Here is your winner, Skip Sheffield. Well, that makes him 2 and 0 Saxon. He's certainly building some momentum here. And for some reason, the FCW universe seems to have actually taken to this poor fed cowboy. Take a look at it again. Lennox McEnroe, uh, how do you prepare for a guy like Skip Sheffield? Landed on top of his shoulders, and there was only one direction to go. And that's down. Skip Sheffield now 2 0 in Florida Championship Wrestling. Folks, our main event is next. Huge, and I mean huge, six man tag team match. Treparetta, Kayla Croft, the Dude Busters team up with SmackDown's Kurt Hawkins to take on the Florida Tag Team Champions, Boa Dupertundo and Brett DiBiase. The following contest is a six-man tag team match scheduled for one fall. Introducing first, the team of Trent Beretta, Kalen Croft, and Kurt Hopkins. The 
Dubuses are a huge multi-international team, so there's always room for expansion. It's true. Oh, Kurt Hawkins. And I just got my official Dude Buster headband. I'm ready to bust some dudes. So who are you going to call? Probably the Dude Busters. Oh, oh, what do you say? Apparently, uh, there's room for expansion within Dude Busters Incorporated, and apparently, Kalen and Trent have adopted Kurt Hawkins. It's incredible. The Dude Busters have found themselves a new playmate, and it's none other than the only former world champion in the FCW locker room, Kurt Hawkins. Introducing their opponent, the team of Brett DiBiase and the Florida Tag Team Champions, Bo and Duke Rotundo. Well, this whole thing stems from last week. It was Bo Rotundo taking on Kalen Cross. Next thing you know, in comes Kurt Hawkins. In comes Brett DiBiase. Get all six men going at it. So Abraham Washington says, you know what? Let's have a six man tag. And here we are tonight this week. Well, this should be an amazing matchup, but the thing that sticks out to me, you've got to compare the experience of the two sides. If you look at the Doom Busters and Kurt Hawkins, between them, they've got over 20 years experience in sports entertainment. But if you look at Brett Gibiossi and the two Rotundo boys, they barely scraped two years between them. Well, regardless of the experience difference, keep in mind, who's wearing the titles? Who's got the championships? It's those wild boys, the Rotundos, and I'm predicting they're not going to be hanging on, hanging on to them for much longer. Kurt Hawkins in there, Brett DiBiase, these guys. Well, I was going to say, had a, quite a match a couple weeks ago, but uh, thanks to some interference, some dubious interference. <clears throat> Trent Barreto. And I've got to say, I'm impressed with Kurt Hawkins. Look at him, he's decked out in Dude Buster garb. It's so impressive. He's fitting in so well there. Something tells me you'd like to be an honorary Dude Buster. Well, it looks like a lot of fun, doesn't it, Saxon? And the thing about the Dude Busters is they are winners. Yeah, and then you get driven home by Trent's mom at the end of the night. Right. I can't find a fault with that. Brett DiBiase, the dauntless. DiBiase in there with the self-proclaimed 22-year-old prodigy. Oh, nice quickness by both men. Up top, down low goes Trent. Red DiBiase so quick on his feet. Grew up in Clinton, Mississippi. Played a little soccer, played a little football, but he always wanted to enter the family business. Enter the family business, you say. I say he's riding on the coattails of his brother, of his father, of his grandmother, and his grandfather. You know, they've got a long tradition in that family, and Brett DiBiase has had it easy so far, but I think that's going to change tonight. Uh, I beg to disagree, having it easy. Brett DiBiase's earned everything he's got. Yeah, yeah, but there's a real man for you. There's a real man for you. Let me go hide. Let me go run in the corner and hang on to my partner. Absolute nonsense, Saxon. That was two on one. That was Duke Rotundo and Brett Dibby. Yeah, you can't even talk because you, you can't protect that. Come on. Just be quiet, Saxon, and watch the match. I'm sorry, I can't. It's my job to talk. The big Duke Rotundo man does know his own strength. Into a Kurt Hawkins. He really went flying outside of the ring, hooks the leg. Wow, that was some explosive power right there. You know, Duke Rotunda, he's a former state wrestling champion. He's also a former offensive lineman for Troy University, and he's using every ounce of his power right now. Duke Rotunda, modified suplex, more of a throw on Kurt Hawkins, shoulders down. I mean, it's that, that unorthodox offense, that unorthodox style that we see from Duke Rotundo, which is partly why he is one half of the tag team champions. And oh, there goes the headband. And now what's he doing? He's stealing the clothing off Kurt Hawkins, oh. but that caught him by surprise. A drop kick right in the mush. Well, there's that experience level. And we got a step ahead of Duke Rotundo, who's still got that headband. And in comes Kalen Croft. Formerly one half of the tag team champions, and it has been eating, eating away at Trent Beretta and Kalen Croft. 
they feel they deserve another shot at the tag team titles. How's that legal, Saxton? Ow. He just headbutted him right in the wedding tackle. Hey, referee's got to call it right in the what? The wedding tackle. That's a low blow. It's not allowed. It's in the rule book, Saxton. Maybe you should read it. Hey, whatever it was, referee's got to call it. Double team maneuver, Rotundos. Kayla Croft on the receiving end from all ends. This is one-way traffic so far, but the problem is with youth and enthusiasm. You sometimes blow your wand too early, and I think that's what we're going to see here. Well, if you keep a track at home, the third headband has been removed. This time off Kayla Stolen, Croft. not removed. No well, choice of words, semantics. Oh. Out goes Croft. Hawkins and Beretta in. Shades of last week. And the three dude busters are on the outside now. And look at the thieves gloating with their swag in the ring. That's disgusting. Call a spade a spade, Saxton. Oh, wait a minute. It looks like we have a little uh, fashion adjustment here. DiBiase hits the ropes. Hits the ropes again. Hits the ropes a third time. And ladies and gentlemen, the new Sickening. Dude Busters. Sickening, Saxton. Imitation is the biggest form of flattery, but that is just disgusting right there. Gimmick infringement is what you call that. You're awful sensitive about this, aren't you? I'm sick of these kids in that ring right now. And watch out, Trent Beretta inside and out again. Thanks for coming, Trent. Is the referee going to get control here or what? The tag team champions and Brett DiBiase having their way with Team Dude Buster. Flying on the outside. And that would leave Big Duke Big Duke, oh, 320 pounds of Big Duke in the ring. Yeah, you don't think Duke's gonna... I mean, uh, he's, he's thinking about it. No. No uh, way. Duke going up to the top rope. Stop the match. Somebody stop the match. That's a three he's a lunatic. He's a plus the man. Oh, my gosh. Call an ambulance. That was like a bowling alley. Look at the skittles. Skittles everywhere. Bodies everywhere, ladies and gentlemen. Six man tag match continues. We gotta take a break. Oh, what a match! Welcome back to Florida Championship Wrestling. Just before the break, take a look at this over 300 pounds of Duke Rotundo playing the role of a proverbial bowling ball, taking out Team Duke Buster. And as we join you now, Bo Rotundo in firm control and sporting one of three Dude Buster headbands. Well, that was a scene of utter, utter carnage. I don't know who got, got taken out worse there. He may have even damaged his own team more. Well, that's the risk you take every time you're in that ring, especially when you're trying to get that win. And Bo Rotunda is in the absolute ascendancy right now. I cannot believe the domination that has been shown against the Dude Busters. What do you mean? They're the Florida Tag Team Champions for a reason. I mean, sure, they're a little different, you know. They're, they're thieves, if you ask me, Saxton. They're not thieves. They stole the headbands of the Dude Busters. Oh, cool. don't, don't get me started on the antics of the Dude Busters. Don't get me started on Trent Beretta last week. Kurt Hawkins in there. Oh, tried to capitalize on the opening for Kalen Croft. Hawkins, perhaps the most experienced superstar in this match. Nice snap suplex. Hooks the leg of Bo Rotundo. And now we're going to see the Dude Busters do what they do best. They've got a man down, they've got an injured opponent in their corner, and they are going to go to town on him. Fill your boots, boys. Trent Beretta. Always cocky, but firmly aggressive. Oh, he knocked Bobo Tundo out of his boots here. Two count only, says the referee. And look at how Trent Beretta cinching back that rear chin line, trying to cut out that oxygen supply. Well, you have to say the Dude Busters, they weathered that early storm. And what a storm it was. It was like a Force 5 hurricane tearing through there. Bo Rotundo trying to get back to his feet, trying to reach for the tag. He's got his brother and Brett DiBiase waiting for him. Inching closer, closer. Can he make it? No. Russian leg sweep. Very nice. Right at the perfect moment.
Bo Rotundo, in a very bad place, being in the corner of the Dude Busters. Having the ability to tag in and out, constantly keeping the fresh man in. Kurt Hawkins just yelling at Bo Rotundo. And look at the teamwork in progress right now. Three on one. Bo Rotundo cannot win this match from this position. Bo Rotundo's got to get out of that corner. Things are looking very bleak indeed. Doesn't look like much of a champion now, does he, A. Hey, Saxton? Well, you certainly quite not, no, not at the moment. No, he doesn't that look like a champion. But this match isn't over, mind you. I bet you endorse that, right? Stand on the man's hair. There's nothing wrong with it, Saxon. You got a five count. Kalen Crop perhaps trying to send a message to the Rotundos. This is justice being served here now. This is what should happen to all thieves. Every thief in the city of Tamba should be brought to the FCW arena and put in a ring with these three they're Doobusters. Thieves. They're thieves because they're wearing the headbands. They Watch stole the, the headbands of the Doobusters. Saxton, how many times can a man turn his head and, and claim that he just doesn't see, eh? How many times? Because that's all you're doing tonight, Saxton. I'm blinking. Yeah. I'm looking at the same monitor you're watching. Kurt Hawkins, thrown to the outside like a piece of trash. Oh, whoa, oh, what are you implying there? I'm implying that he's been treated like dirt because he's a common thief. With Bo Rotundo trying to get in, and Brett DiBiase and Duke Rotundo doing him no favors. This is your main event on FCW TV. Thank you very much, folks, for joining us. Six-man tag match. Kurt Hawkins driving the foot into the abdomen of Bo Rotundo, basically having his way with him. And again, the strategy right back to the corner. Let's see what Trent Barata does here. Trent. He's winding up for that big elbow drop of his. On the outside. <laughs> Outstanding comedy time. You like that? That was amazing. You, you really like that? You know, all That's this monkeying around, it serves a purpose. Yeah, yeah oh, so the man could have gone for a pin, could have gotten the win. Instead, he wants to monkey around it. Yes, and that's Saxton. okay. It frustrates your opponents and it gives your own side a morale boost. Do not underestimate Trust monkeying the man's around. The out on his back. Trip Renna probably could have gotten the win there if he did take away some of that cockiness and immaturity for once. Oh, the win's coming, Saxton. They're just looking good while they do it. Yeah, yeah. It's called the sophomore attitude. And apparently Kurt Hawkins is joined right in. No Rotundo, he's taken so much punishment by all three, all three of this Dude Buster team. Oh, wow, my gosh. Trump Beretta going for that cross body. He got turned inside out on those ropes there. And there's the tag, Brett DiBiase is in. He only got decapitated, and now, Brett DiBiase, Kurt Hawkins, shades of last week. Ibiasi all over Hawkins. Oh, yeah. oh, oh speed driving four on Brett DiBiase. Dying to get his hands back on Hawkins. And Trent Brenner makes the save. Trent Brenner makes the save. Duke, God, strength. Unbridled strength of Duke Rotundo. And here we see some more of that carnage we saw earlier. And now. DDT, Bulldog, action everywhere, bodies everywhere. Referee trying to maintain some sense of control. And back to Hawkins, DiBiase, DiBiase slaps on the dream, the main other dream. Hawkins got out of it though, that's experience for you, Saxton. DiBiase tried going up top, Kurt Hawkins. Chair. One step ahead of him, watch Trent Barretta. Misses the crossbody. DiBiase rolls up pockets. Here are your winners, Brett DiBiase and Bo and Duke Rotundo. Triple one, Justice Zero. It's a sickener. Talk about an action-packed main event. Take a look again. Kurt Hawkins and Trent Barretta thought they had Brett DiBiase right where they wanted him. But quick thinking, victory roll. Trent Barretta misses the crossbody. And it's team Rotundo DiBiase as your winner.
Warriors tonight on FCW. Folks, check this out. Next week, just signed, sealed, and delivered. It's SmackDown versus ECW as Eric Escobar goes one-on-one -on -one with Yoshi Tatsu. Yet another huge matchup here at FCW, and I'm the one I'm not going to miss next week's main event. For myself, Byron Saxon, he's way big. See you next week. Until then, Gordon Soley saying so long from the Sunshine State.